Decimals can feel confusing for students and sometimes even for us adults trying to explain them. That's why I love using base 10 blocks to represent decimals. In this video, you'll see three examples of how to model decimals using them so you can explain decimals clearly and build your child's confidence in math. Base 10 blocks flexibly represent whole numbers. Typically, unit cubes represent ones, rods represent tens, flats represent hundreds, and large cubes represent thousands. And as I mentioned before in this series, because base 10 blocks represent place value relationships in the base 10 system, each block is 10 times the value of the block to its right. That means depending on where you start or what number you want to model, the same block can represent different values. For example, a large cube could represent 1,000, or it could represent 100, or even 10. A flat might represent 100, or it could represent 10, or it could even be just one whole. And a rod could represent 10, 1, or 1 tenth, depending on what role you assign it. This flexibility is what makes base 10 blocks so powerful for modeling decimals. So what happens when we shift to the right of the ones place? If the rod becomes one whole, then the unit cube now represents a tenth. If the flat becomes one whole, then the rod represents a tenth and the unit cube represents a hundredth. And if the large cube is the whole, then the flat is a tenth, the rod is a hundredth, and the unit cube is a thousandth. I want you to notice how the pattern continues. Each time we move one place to the right, the block becomes 10 times smaller. That's the heart of the decimal place value system. Let's model three numbers with decimals using base 10 blocks. 108 and 5 tenths, 24 and 37 hundredths, and 723 thousandths. Before we start, think about this. Which block would you choose to represent one whole in each example? You'll see how my choice impacts the rest of the blocks. In our first example, 108 and 5 tenths, we'll make the unit cube represent tenths. Rod represents ones, the flat represents tens, and a large cube can represent hundreds. 108 and 5 tenths has 100, zero tens, eight ones, and five tenths. In example two, 24 and 37 hundredths, the last digit is in the hundredths place. So this time, we'll let the unit cube represent hundredths. That makes the unit cube representing hundredths Rod represents the tenths, a flat represents ones, and the large cube can represent tens. 24 and 37 hundredths has two tens, four ones, three tenths, and seven hundredths. Here's something to think about. How does this setup compare to the first one? Same blocks, but now the flat is no longer tens, it's just ones. That flexibility is what helps students really see the structure of decimals. In our last example, 723 thousandths, the final digit is in the thousandths place. So this time, unit cube represents the thousands, the rod represents hundreds, the flat can represent tenths, and the large cube can represent the ones. 
723 has zero ones, seven tenths, two hundredths, and three thousandths. Here's a question I'd ask my students. Which part of the number do you think has the greatest value? The tenths, hundredths, or thousandths? A fun game to play with your students called Shifting Units comes from the book Elementary and Middle School Mathematics by John Vanderwall. I've included the exact page number and game details in the description below. Here's how it works. Have your students gather a mix of base 10 blocks. Secretly choose one block to represent the ones place and hide it behind your back. Then reveal the block. For example, if you show a rod as the ones, the rest of the blocks fall into place based on that choice. Students then have to determine the value of the mix of blocks based on which block was chosen as one whole. So if the rods are ones, what do the large cubes, flats, and unit cubes represent? And what is the total value of the mix of blocks? If the rods are ones, then the units are tenths, the flats are tens, and the large cubes represent hundreds. In total, there is one hundred, two tens, three ones, and four tenths. One hundred, twenty-three, and four tenths. This is a great way to get them talking, thinking flexibly, and even debating all while deepening their understanding of decimals. To review, base 10 blocks aren't just for whole numbers. They flexibly represent decimals too, from tenths to hundredths to thousandths. Try these examples with your students or kids and even play around with the shifting units game to give them extra practice. In the next video, we'll use base 10 blocks to show how to add decimals step by step. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell notification so you'll know exactly when that video comes out. Remember, practice makes progress, and I'll see you in the next video.